Hello there, YouTube. This is Necrostevo, and it's time for week one in the Alpha Pokemon League. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've posted, but we're going to jump right into this league. I will be doing like a little bit of a team review and such later on when I have time. But for now, week one is up against the South Texas Sableyes, whom are coached by Invivid Cuddler. So if you would like to check out his channel, there will be a link in the description. And if you want to skip the team prep and jump right into the battle, there will be a little annotation in the description to do that. So be sure to go check him out. I watched, I actually hadn't battled this individual before, so I was checking out some of his content. Very, um, very chill, very creative. So I highly recommend looking at his, at his channel. Um, for those of you who don't know, a quick and dirty rundown of the leagues in the Alpha Pokemon League. Number one, you're allowed to draft more than one Mega Pokemon. It's kind of a tier-based draft system. Uh, number two, you're allowed to use Mega or non-Mega for any of the Mega Pokemon that you draft. So that's fantastic. Uh, only one Z-Captain per team, and that's important. Um, and if you lose your Z-Captain, you don't get another one. And they're allowed to use offensive or support moves. So that's all gravy. Now then, for my matchup here, we see that he has Garchomp, Klefki, Roserade, Bronzong, Scyther, Starmie, Mega Sableye, Electros. I just realized Electros was misspelled because of Isaiah. That's fine. Chandelure, Palace Wine, and Audino, with his Z Captain being Garchomp. Now, I haven't done a draft analysis for my team, but I will tell you what I'm bringing to this matchup. Uh, up first, we have our Z Captain Arcanine with the Furium Z with Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, Crunch, and Will O Wisp. Uh, such moves are just so I have a way to hit Chandelure, and everything else is getting hit by Flare Blitz. And um, Will O Wisp is to catch weird things on the switching because I could totally see Garchomp coming in um, to a lesser extent, something like Electros. Uh, also, fun little fact there if I can bring it in on the Mega Sableye as it is. Will o Wisping, I will get a nice flash fire boost. Um, it's also nice to get flash fire boost from something like Electros that might be going for the, the flamethrower or um, uh, a chandelure that's scarfed and locked into the flamethrower um, or even hidden power fire from Rose Ray with Technician. All fantastic to get the boost from. And I can just get off really, really strong Inferno Overdrive that nukes the majority of his team. That's really there just for the Sableye, though, just because that thing being defensive can be annoying to take down. Um, and of course, my own Will-O-Wisp can help neuter a few things on his team, too. Up next, we have our wonderful wall breaker, uh, Araquanid, going choice bin with Liquidation, Lunge, Leech Life, and Sleep Talk. Uh, the move set looks a little bit weird because I'm going to be clicking Liquidation the majority of the time. With a Choice Ban and Max Attack, Liquidation does boatloads of damage to everything on his team, bar Starmie and Roserade. And Starmie and Roserade, unless they're defensive, they still take a ton of damage. Um, and unless they're Specs or Life Orb, they can't really one-hit KME back because of Araquanid's fantastic special defense stat. I do have enough speed here to outspeed. Uh, I just wanted to creep Electros and Palace Wine. They're both base 50. So if he either doesn't invest or he only invests a little bit, I'll be able to outspeed them. Um, and, uh, oh, and the speed on the Arcanine is actually for Roserade. Uh, Cause Roserade is a problem for my team. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be clicking Liquidation the majority of the time here. Lunge and Leech Life are nice if I see opportunities to get HP back or lower the attack of something like Garchomp trying to swap in. Um, but really, Liquidation is all I, I need for this match. That's probably going to be a running theme this season. I hope I can get Araquanid to the, the MVP position with just Liquidation. That would be fun. Uh, up next, we have a defensive Serena. Uh, just enough speed there on Serena for like an uninvested, um, whoops, for an uninvested cleft key, excuse me. And the rest is actually in defense so that I can check Garchomp, especially if Garchomp is Scarf or if it uh, has already burned its Z move or if Garchomp lacks Fire Blast, for example. Serena's a really solid can uh, counter or check really to it because if it's Fire Fang, it's a three hit KO. 
and that's not even including my ability to get leftovers and synthesis. Uh, Serena is also a soft check to Palace Wine because I can swap in on those ice shards, block them with Queenly Majesty, and then do some serious damage back with Trop Kick, even without any investment. Uh, primarily, though, Serena is just a good pivot, and he has so many entry hazard options that I need to have Rapid Spin here because he has spikes, toxic spikes, and Stealth Rock options and I can't just let all that run around. Um, so yeah. Um, next we have our Mega Garchomp. First time I've ever tried using Mega Garchomp in a Draft League format, so we'll see how this goes. But um, this one has Fire Fang, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, our dedicated lead just because it's so bulky. Uh, if he leads with anything besides his own Garchomp or the Starmie, um, or the Palace Wine, then I will stay in and I will click Stealth Rocks because I want Stealth Rocks up this match. They make things a lot easier for a Raquinid. Um, if he leads with any of those three Pokemon, then I have an appropriate Pokemon to swap out into. For the Palace Wine, I can go out into my Araquanid. For his Garchomp, I can go out into my Serena. And for his... Um, for anything else, I can kind of generally swap into Magneton. Uh, but... Yeah, the speed on this Garchomp is just outspeed the Rose Raid once again, but that's after I Mega. And um, I really wanted to pair it up with Tyranitar because if I'm able to have the Sand Stream up while uh, I have Mega Garchomp on the field, his ability being Sand Force means that I don't have to play around with rolls as much or try to hope for crits on things like Sableye. Nope, I can just kind of power right through everything, um, including even the Bronzong. Really, because just all the extra attack power, I'm able to two hit KO like a specially defensive variant sometimes, um, which he has a decent chance of being physically defensive. But just in case, we have a physically offensive Garchomp, and then we have this really weird mixed Tyranitar that has enough speed to outspeed Starmie by one point with the Choice Scarf, and then I have Pursuit with enough investment to KO the Starmie if it tries to swap out or does like around 60% if it stays in. Uh, then we have Dark Pulse, Ice Beam, and Fire Blast just in case I get burned um, between the the um, the Chandelure or the Mega Sableye. There's a, there's a couple of good burn chances floating around there. And so that's why I do have the special offensive option here. And that also allows me to be somewhat threatening to something that stays in on me like if Starmie stays in or if it has a Culverberry um, I might do a little bit more damage on the special side uh, if he brings a physically defensive Roserade the special side once again um, physically defensive Bronzong once again uh, Palace Wine is more physically inclined so we can hit the, that with a little bit more special side moves so I just thought overall going special with Tyranitar was more important but I just went mixed so that I could trap the Starmie because I'm fairly certain he's bringing it the final Pokemon is Magneton with the Eviolite, and it has just barely enough speed so that it can outspeed, yet again, Uninvested Klefki. And then the rest is all in my Special Attack and Special Defense, because without Special Defense, this thing drops to Roserade's Hidden Power Fire. But with Special Defense and an Eviolite, I can live one and at least do some damage to it with Flash Cannon. Uh, fortunately, I can also trap in the Klefki and the Bronzong to stop them from pivoting around. I don't think I'll really need to do that. Like, I was really tempted to bring Analytic here. But I, I'd much, it is nice to be able to trap in those defensive-type Pokemon and just get rid of them. That way they can stop supporting the team and I don't have to worry about them anymore. Uh, and Modest, just because the speed wasn't needed, really. Magneton is a little bit odd in this last slot, but really, uh, it's just here for support and... The, the main star of this show, I think, is going to be the Tyranitar or my Araquanid, just because of the damage they can do to his options. But let me know what you guys think of the team prep, and let's get into the battle. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for watching the team builder. If you didn't, you can see the team that I brought here. Quick rundown is going to be the Garchomp, Mixed Scarf, Tyranitar, uh, that's a Mega Garchomp, rather, Bandit, Araquanid, Fury MZ, uh, on the Infernape and my Serena with the defensive set. And he obviously brought his Palace Wine, Rose Raid, Starmie, Sableye, Garchomp, and Bronzong. And man, this is not a team that can switch into my Araquanid. 
So the game plan is still to lead off with Garchomp and hope I can put up Stealth Rocks. And if he leads Palaswine or the Sableye, I do have to swap out from them because I don't want to get burned or knocked out by the ice move. But uh, outside of those two, I can set up Stealth Rocks. And then every opportunity I have to bring in my um, Araquanid and click Liquidation, I have to take it every time I have that chance because it can really punch holes in his team. And he did bring in Starmie and Rosary, but those two aren't really swap-ins to uh, my Araquanid because even if they're defensive, Araquanid can do around 50% to them. Uh, so here he does get the lead matchup with the Palace Lion, which was annoying. I was very tempted to stay in and click the um, the Stealth Rock there, but I just swapped out and made the safe play there because I was afraid he wouldn't set up his Stealth Rocks. And what do you know, he does go for it. Araquanid eats it up nicely, and then I get a chance to go for a free liquidation. And by that damage, he should know that I'm banded. Uh, I actually had a good chance to, um, if he were like an offensive Bronzong, I would have KO'd him completely. So he's obviously some sort of defensive support or something like that. Uh, since it did that much damage though, he's obviously a little bit more specially inclined. He does go for Protect just to get some leftovers recovery, but I'm just going to keep on clicking Liquidation. <laughs> I figured he would bring in the Roserade, and I needed to see what kind it was, because if it were offensive, I would take it down to like 10%. Defensive takes right around 50%, but defensive can't really threaten my Araquanid too much. You can see here that I do get the defense drop with Liquidation, and that means that the health that he recovers from Giga Drain is not going to be enough to save him. Uh, so the defense drop did matter in that sense, but Rosary was such a big threat to my team, I was not swapping out on it. Uh, here, I figured he would go straight for Thunderbolt just because he can't afford to go for Hydro Pump expecting my switch. So I go right out into my Magneton, and I see that he's Life Orb, which is fantastic, because now it just means that I need to get four more hits of Life Orb on him, and then I can easily KO him with Dark Pulse or um, my uh, my other Trianatar's moves. But expecting him to swap out into Garchomp, I went for Magnet Rise, because I didn't think he would stay in. And that's perfect, because now it kind of forces him out, because that means he doesn't have a Fire-type move. Or maybe he had Fire Blast and didn't want to risk the miss. Um, and so that means I get a free attack off, and he goes out to sacrifice his Bronzong, I think that was his rocker, so excellent. I don't have to worry about stealth rocks from that thing. He could still possibly have them on the palace wine, but that's okay. Uh, as he goes out into Sableye here, I really needed to gauge what kind of Sableye this is, so I decided to go for a Volt Switch instead of hard swapping out. And on the off chance that he just stayed in and he went for the uh, Prankster Will O Wisp without Mega Evolving, I'd rather have that hit Magneton than try to hard swap and, and risk something. But since he stayed in, I figured he went for Will O Wisp, and so I went out into my. Arcanine, which means I get the Flash Fire Boost, and with the Flash Fire Boost, even if he is a max defense Sableye, this is going to be able to KO him, uh, because of course Flash Fire is 50%, and then coming with the Furium Zeon Inferno Overdrive there, that's going to hurt. And that's exactly what I wanted Arcanine to do, was to handle the Sableye. So uh, that worked out very well. We are going to save Arcanine, because if uh, Garchomp is Scarfed, or if the Starmie gets whittled and I need to pick it off with a uh, extreme speed, we're gonna hold on Arcanine for that. Expecting Hydro Pump, we go out into my Serena, and now expecting the Ice Beam, we're gonna go and double back out to my Magneton. Now, all these switching around might seem pointless, but we're racking up Life Orb damage on him that is crucial, because then I won't have to play the guessing game with my Tyranitar. Granted, I know that I'm faster than him because of my Choice Scarf and his Life Orb, but he could still swap out into something like Palaswine and take basically no damage from the Dark Pulse. Now, unfortunately, I do get frozen here, but it doesn't really matter overall. Uh, I just don't like seeing my Pokemon frozen. It's like, no, they're frozen in a block of ice. It's very um, kind of sad, actually. But since he doesn't know that I'm not Scarfed, or I, that I am Scarfed, rather, I just decided to go out to it, which should have been a huge red flag that I was Scarfed, but I wanted him to stay in, expecting Pursuit. And we're just able to KO Starmie with a Dark Pulse. Now right here I am locked on Dark Pulse and I, I knew he would probably expect me to swap out. But Dark Pulse it wasn't doing anything to Garchomp. So I just go out to Serena which is my dedicated swap in. And he shows me Swords Dance and I was like, oh man, Serena can't take a Swords Dance boosted Z move. And he does have the Z move. And look at that animation, we know it's the dragon one with those jaws there. So while Serena does have some impressive physical prowess, 
It cannot take a plus two stab devastating Drake. Good grief, this damage and this really cool animation too. But granted, that is what Serena was there to do. I allowing him to use up that Z move on my Serena is much preferred than it taking up my Tyranitar. But he knows that I'm Scarf now. I could have gone for Dark Pulse here, but I didn't want to risk that, if that makes sense, because I still have four Pokemon left, and um, as long as I'm able to whittle the Garchomp, uh, if I get an absolute minimum roll, I can't one-hit KO it with Ice Beam, but that would be absolute minimum. And uh, if his Z move was based off of Dragon Claw, then Dragon Claw, of course, won't KO my Mega Garchomp, but it's actually Outrage. Which is perfect because the Earthquake wouldn't have KO'd my Mega Garchomp either. So, since he's locked into Outrage, that means I get to go back out on Tyranitar. And I get a chance to KO him with the Ice Beam. Uh, if he had gone for Earthquake, he would have failed to KO me and then I would have KO'd him back with Dragon Claw. We can see that he lives there on 1 HP. I got the absolute minimum roll there. But that is why I saved Arcanine, just in case that situation happened because then I could pick him off with Extreme Speed. Uh, and so Garchomp goes down to my Tyranitar as well, meaning his last Pokemon is his Palaswine. I could have very easily just swapped out here, but I didn't want to risk anything weird, so we're just going to stay in and go for another Ice Beam for a little bit of extra chip damage. Tyranitar goes down, but now I'm afforded a free switch into my Araquanid, which uh, with the speed creeping that I put on it should always outspeed Palaswine. So a Banded Liquidation is definitely going to take Palaswine down. And that is going to be the victory over In Vivid Color and the South Texas Sableyes. So thank you so much for the battle. Big MVP there was definitely the, a mix between Tyranitar and Araquanid, which is just what I wanted it to be. Um, they both performed their roles exactly how I wanted them to. Now I will discuss something. Uh, In Vivid Color in his preparation didn't actually realize that I had the capability to bring non-mega Garchomp or non-mega Tyranitar. In the Alpha Pokemon League, when you draft a Pokemon, if you draft the Mega, you don't have to bring the Mega form. You can bring it with the Scarf, you can bring it with, you can, I can bring both with their Mega Stones and only use one in the battle. I have that, that liberty in my sets there, but that's because I spent the extra points on drafting those two Pokemon. So, uh, for anyone who's wondering, oh, you drafted Mega Tyranitar, but you didn't bring it as a Mega. Those are part of the rules for this League. So uh, I do think his prep would have been different had he realized that, but I don't know. I don't know that too much would have changed there. Um, and one big turning point, I guess, a bit of, the bit of hacks that didn't matter was getting the defense drop on the Roserade, because without the defense drop, then he would have lived another liquidation, uh, forcing me to swap out. So just a couple points of interest there that we needed to review. But overall, I was very pleased with how my team did in this battle. And we get to start off the Alpha Pokemon League with a big victory. So, where we go from here? We go to week two and look forward to that upload next Saturday. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out Color's channel, and I will talk to you all in a week. See you later.